Greetings out there in YouTube land, and welcome to another episode of Tell It Like It Is. I'm your host, Morris, man, and my co-host. Joseph Spencer. And today we're going to do, I guess, a follow-up to the recent uh, topic that we just did about black folks need to change their social behavior. And I knew that we were going to have to continue this conversation because it's an important topic. Because uh, just yesterday I had a young man come up to me, a young black man. He recognized me from the show, thanked us for, you know, trying to do what we're trying to do as far as educate our young folks. And he had a question, and I'm going to start this particular episode off with this question that he, that he posed to me. He said, being an older black man, if you had to give only one bit of advice to young black men, what would it be? And that's a no-brainer. Do not have kids with people that you're not going to have a long-term relationship or be married to because that affects you your entire life and your offspring. Because you can go out tomorrow, commit a crime, and do five years, and you can kind of rebuild your life after that, that incident, in most cases. But when you start having kids with people that you're no longer going to be involved with, it affects you in the long run as far as, uh, oops, here comes child support, and also the, the children that you have. You know, you're not in, their, in the household trying to take care and, 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 and uh, raise a young man, you know, because uh, I used to hear this a lot when I was single from what black, angry black women. Where are the real good, where are the good men out there? And my response is the good men are out there with the good women. So apparently if you're not with one of the good men, you ain't one of the good women. And a lot of us don't realize this uh, as far as, uh, I hear this a lot too, you know, black men ain't blank, you know, a young black men ain't blank. And those young black men that they're speaking of, came from women that are not married, uh, didn't keep uh, a relationship with the father, you know, uh, grandmama's not trying to raise your child when she shouldn't, you know, so it's a domino effect, you know, if, if we don't take care of all of our people, you know, our young black men and young black women, you're going to have a lot of problems. And, you know, and it's unfortunate that it's like that because uh, I got a list, a laundry list here that I'm going to try to go through in a short period of time, but I'm going to turn it over to Joe and just get some quick insight on him, and then I'll continue. Well, when I first started experience that there ain't no good black men, in the na little neighborhood I came from, uh, 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 the, the most of the attractive women were doing something, had the men in the neighborhood was a few men, and the good black men was the one with the cars. Uh, particularly women who say that are looking for a man to do what they say do, not to be a partner. But they looking for somebody, you know, okay, baby, okay, baby. This, that, that's my conception of the whole thing, my, what I, I noticed down through the years. As you can see, I ain't got old. So if you're not paying for everything, you're not a good black man, you know. So uh, uh, they have this misconception now of, of being uh, uh, Madonna or Beyonce, you know, and, and having men follow them about and do stuff for them. They're not doing a partnership thing. You know, and when they have babies, uh, you owe me. You don't owe our child, but you owe me because I gave you a kid. Stuff, you know. So you're supposed to do 90% of the work, and I'm the woman I'm supposed to kick back, you know. And, and that's a good point, and I want to say this in defense of women. As we come into this world, and this is, just a, this is beyond the color barrier. This, this, this applies to everybody, not just black people. We come into this world, men and women, with these things as far as waiting on us. And what I mean by that is, as far as a man, no matter what you look like, you can be 200 pounds, big belly, you just better bring the money and be the sponsor. Women, they come in with the pressure of they gotta look good, be sexy, if you can't do nothing else, because that's all we need you for. So it's unfortunate that we, as men and women, are forced to try to live up to an expectation that's unrealistic. Because uh, I've been fortunate all my life and I've worked hard to have gotten what I've gotten. Mm -hmm. And when I was a teenager, I was an average teenager, I had a car and I bought the car myself, I worked. And uh, so I was able to take women out on dates, but I had a buddy, really good guy, he didn't have a car, he didn't have a chance. You know, that's why Not he couldn't go out because uh, he didn't have a car. Don't have a car. And it's like, it's just unfortunate that we are uh, taken by, uh, value by these things and it shouldn't be that way. Because yeah. when I look at a woman, I don't look at, uh, you know, the beauty got to be there, and that's the, the main pro, you know, objective. And if you're not, you know, 110 pounds, I don't want to be bothered with you. Because it's unfortunate because you miss out on a lot of good people being so narrow-minded and sh so shallow and vain. But, you know, uh, those are the things that men and women have to deal with, because I don't totally blame women for that mentality. 
You know, uh, society has thrusted that nonsense into their psyche to say, hey, uh, if he don't have a car or making a whole lot of money, don't bother him. You know, as opposed to, uh, he's a hardworking guy, he's going to build, he's trying to build, uh, I'm going to try to build with him. You know, so it's just really messed up how things are because of, you know, talk about just the things that I see now versus the things that I used to. And uh, I don't want to make it seem like this is uh, just too old a guy <coughs> saying about how things are now versus then because it's not. What I'm saying is there's some things that are just supposed to stay in line forever, regardless of if it's 50 years ago or 50 years now. You know, it's not a trend. It's just etched in stone that it should be this way. You know, here's some examples, and we talk about this off camera all the time. I look up and see little kids taking little kids to school. When I was that small, mama took me, or daddy, there was no brother taking me because he was a child himself. But we see that so much now, and it's because, you know, even back then, most of us didn't plan our kids. Some of us didn't, and some, you know, just happened. The average person, the black person didn't plan right. their kids, average. But, but even still, if you haven't, you still need to put together a plan after the fact, mm -hmm. as opposed to I'm just going to let the chips fall where they may. Because, again, I see these little kids, Joe, taking these little kids to yeah, school. I've been watching and that. I'm like, where are these parents at? You know, it's, it's just ridiculous. Well, I hope they had work. Well, even still, you know, uh, they said but, somebody taking them. But you see, it goes back to that. When, when I was a kid, uh, uh, grandparents were on the porch, and they'd take your kid. The kids had their grandparents come to go. So uh, uh, your parents were at work or doing whatever they were doing to support the household. And they had a role, and, and you're right. Role. But now yeah. the new thing is, not to cut you off, the new thing is grandmother has actually taken, take moved up into that slot of the man that has left. Right. And it's like uh, I was at the... Uh, dentist's office about three years ago. This lady came in, she had to be in her 30s, not a teenager, not a 20-year-old. She was there with her daughter, and then her mother was there. Mm -hmm. And her mother was kind of like still directing the family, like, where's the husband or the boyfriend? Because this he's supposed to be here, not mama. But, you know, mama has taken that role, and mama has kind of hurt the structure herself because she's not encouraging Go out there and find you somebody, fall in love, get married, and start a family. Instead, uh, I help you raise these babies when you come in after dealing with these guys and have just a casual relationship and the baby come out of it. Mm -hmm. All that stuff got to stop, mm -hmm. you know, because you're doing more damage to your kids and, and their kids than good. Stop depending on that you got the goods. I heard somebody that I admired, I'm not going to mention her name, but her last name is supposed to be Queen. And when she said that, it put me off on her. And she's a much younger woman than I am, an older man. When she said, honey, don't take that. We're the ones with the goods. That, that's telling that you're a commodity. It is what it is, you know. We all have to respect each other. Because uh, I remember having a conversation with a lady before, and she said this. Uh, I went out with this guy. And we'll get there, this trop nonsense that we, we can do all this stuff. And most of us are just struggling, average working class man. We're not Donald Trump. But he sold himself as, yeah, I'm going to take you out and the sky's the limit and take you and have lobster and all that. And they went out and, uh, you know, they said, she said they had a good time up until it was getting late. The, the meal was already done. He leaned over for a little affection and she's like, whoa. And that's when everything changed. She got upset. He started calling her names. Uh, she said that she left the restaurant because he picked her up and brought her there. She said she walked to the bus stop, and as she was walking, he's pulling up alongside her, calling all types of names. Now, I don't condone that behavior from, from any man because uh, what he did was wrong. But what we had to stop doing is using each other, you know, because uh, men have feelings. You know, they don't want to feel like uh, they're just getting used and then, oh, you a nice guy. And, Peck on the cheek and leave, you know. When, when, when you, uh, I stepped into a bar, I was much younger, and uh, I just got back in the States and saw a lovely black woman that was sitting at the bar, I offered to buy her a drink, and she looked at me and said, well, that's the only thing you, have, you can do. I'm not going home with you. I didn't have the, the mindset that the women actually would sell themselves for the evening for a couple of drinks yeah. at the bar. The highest bidder. The in highest bidder, cases. you know. And I didn't know, understand what she, because I wasn't, I'm not from that world. Right. And you, you know? weren't thinking in those yeah. terms that if I spend this kind of money, you're going home with me tonight. Right. You know, but we got to stop using each other. Just be upfront and honest. So, so that must be some kind of unwritten law that if, yeah. you, if you meet somebody. You're right. Like, it's an unwritten law and nobody talks about it, but it happens all the time. You know, when, uh, and, 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 and I don't blame 
the woman for that. I blame us too because we've been conditioned mm -hmm. and we're supposed to go out there and just spend all this money. Yeah. And then, you know, we're supposed to expect something at the end of the evening, which we shouldn't. But we put ourselves in that situation to be angry at the end of the night after we spent the hundred dollars, right. which we shouldn't have spent in the first place. You know, so uh, we both as men and women have to become more responsible as far as uh, how we treat each other, and there's no misunderstandings or you know I didn't get the memo at the end of the night. Yeah, you know. Well, I, it, man, but you, you young people got a lot to go through. Yeah, but we're going to do like actually a part three to this because this is a topic that you know we really need to discuss and really need to put it out there. Because our time is, is running out, I see our production assistant is giving us the sign that, you know, we got to shut this one down. So on that note, uh, I thank you guys for coming to uh, my show, Tell It Like It Is. And again, I'm your host, Morris Man, and my co-host. Spencer Joseph. Till next time, keep thinking. <laughs>